Angular together with Angular signals is going towards reactivity. And here I am talking mostly about input signals. Most middle developers simply think that this is another way to work with inputs in Angular. But this is completely wrong. Senior developers understand how it changes detection cycle, performance and maintainability. This is why by the end of this video you will for sure understand why it is not just another way to create your inputs. Before we got Angular signals, we used input decorator. Here you can see a component app user, which has an input user, which is a string. How does it really work? Angular has this change detection cycle. And if anything changed inside the whole application, Angular runs change detection cycle and every single component re-renders itself. But what happens with this specific input? Angular checks if the previous value of this input is exactly the same as current value. So when user changes, Angular sees that and updates the template. This is fine for small and medium applications, but if you have lots of detect changes happening over and over again in your applications, it can cause performance problems. As a solution for that, we are typically using on push. So we are writing here, change detection. And here will be change detection strategy on push. This reduces redundant updates that are happening in Angular application by default. But it shifts responsibility toward the developer. Because now you need to make sure that your change detection was triggered. And sometimes you need to do that manually with change detection ref detect changes or mark for check. And this is how it looks like. We're injecting change detection ref and at the place of our application where we want to manually trigger change detection, we use either detect changes to forcefully trigger the cycle or just to mark this component for check in the next cycle. But now inside Angular Signals, we have a different way to create our inputs. Instead of this input, we are writing it like this. It will be user equals input and we are passing here our data type, which is a string, and then round brackets. And most middle developers that I talk to think that this is simply another notation, nothing else is changed. But actually it is completely different, because a signal input is a function, and it automatically subscribes to reactive data. So instead of Angular checking if this input value changed, our signal pushes updates directly to our consumers. Let's have a look on our example. We have a user and this is our input. When parent updates this user, here inside AppHTML for example, when we are changing our user to bar, our child component reacts directly without running change detection. This enables reactivity by design that you might know from Svelte or SolidJS. So when we call inside our template user signal, Angular knows that our template is dependent on that signal and it updates it when needed. This is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior bootcamp. We try to understand exactly why things are implemented like this and how it works under the hood. Now you know why input signals are better, but do we have another pros? First of all, input signals help us to write our code in reactive way. Before, if we want to create some local variables which are based on our input, then we need to use something like ng-on-changes or input setters. Now we can do it in a reactive way. I can create here a full name, for example, and we are using a computed, and it is also a function which will create a signal for us. And here we can use our variable user, which is an input signal. So we need here round brackets and we can write here whatever we want, like it's a full name. What you can see here, our full name is a signal of string and it will be directly updated when our input string changes. So in a single line, in a reactive way, we are writing our code. One more important point is that Angular is going in the direction of zoneless, so it is working without zone.js. And signals are working by default without zone.js. This is why it makes sense to refactor your old inputs to Angular signals code. Another point is that your code becomes much simpler. You don't need things like mark for check or detect changes that we used before. And here is this small but important thing why I like input signals so much. 
If we comment out our input signal and then comment input, you can see here this exclamation mark. And we are writing this code always with inputs, because when we remove it, we are getting an error. Property user has no initializer and is not definitely assigned in the constructor. This means that by default our input can be undefined. And the solution here would be either to say that our value can be undefined, but then all places of our code need to be fixed additionally, because now the value is not always string. This is not really clean approach, this is why people typically are just writing that the type is string, and here we are adding an exclamation mark. What it does, it simply disables TypeScript completely. We are simply saying for TypeScript, we don't care, we are sure that this is a string. But this is a lie and it makes your application less safe. Because you are not leveraging TypeScript anymore. And it just doesn't make any sense. If you want to write your code as a senior, it must be safe and reliable. This is what I never liked about input decorators. With input signals it is different, by default our input is not required, but we can write here dot required, and no other changes are needed, and now this user input is an input signal, but it is required. And we directly get an error, required input user from component user must be specified. Now we don't need any disabling of TypeScript, and we are sure that our component requires user as a string. So you need to remember three things why Angular input signals are amazing. First of all, it is not just a variable, it is a reactive contract. By defining such inputs, we are defining when our component will be re-rendered. Secondly, we are switching from Angular need to check for change to change will propagate itself. And the last one is extremely important, it reduces the complexity because your data flow is reactive and declarative. So as you can see for a senior developer it is important to master all these small things and understand what new tools are changing exactly and why it matters for architecture. This is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp where I help developers to reach a senior level. So if you are serious about becoming a senior developer, check the link to the bootcamp under the video.